right up inside of the back end of it just like this with the end coming out going to the fuel line. I'm installing right now three little jet points on this ring so that we'll have plenty of fuel to dump into the afterburner and into the ramjet engine portion here. I'm working on the flame holder sections that go around our fuel line for the ramjet engine. I'm just using some flat strip stainless just like this, trimming them down. The little horseshoes, pushing those around the fuel line and then crimping them on, creating basically a little V around each one of my jets. Here's a quick shot of the completed flame holder for you. Let me go ahead and install that into the back side of the ramjet engine. I'll show you what it looks like. Dot of that fuel ring with the flame holder installed. Let me flip it around. You can kind of see from this direction how all those V's are going to work, especially with the flow, kind of straightening them all out. Now if you have a pinch roller, that would be a lot easier just to roll that out of one piece with the V already in it. I didn't have a pinch roller where I'm at right now, so I just decided to do it with little pieces. I'm working on installing our vaporizer or atomizer tubes inside the combustion chamber here. And what these are basically is a tube with some holes up here towards one of the sides. The other side of the tube is actually blocked off, welded, and then ground down. That way nothing can get out that side. The whole sides up here is going to sit right flush just below the surface at the very beginning of our combustion chamber. This is the compressor side of the chamber, not the drive side. And what that's going to do is sit down just like that, down inside the combustion chamber and allow fuel to be sprayed from our fuel lines way down here at the very bottom of the tube. Now the tubes are inside a hot zone inside that combustion chamber. Once the fuel enters into that as a liquid, it's gonna become vaporized inside that heat. The vaporized fuel is gonna come out of these holes here right into the very beginning of our combustion chamber, which is the actual combustion zone. From there, it'll enter into the region of the combustion chamber where the bigger holes are, and that's the saturation zones. That helps kind of just overload the entire stream with a bunch of extra air so that air could be heated and expanded. Our fuel vaporizer tubes are now welded into place, recessed down into the combustion chamber. I've got a fuel ring ready to go. We've got our fuel lines coming off of that. And what this will do is basically go just like this right down to each one of those, just like that. So now we have our fuel line, our fuel atomizers, and our fuel delivery tubes ready to go. Everything's installed. We've got a little notch in the case for the fuel line to come out of the case when the lid sits down on there. We are now done with almost every bit of the construction for our turbo ramjet engine. We finished our fuel lines. I've just installed the ramjet back on the turbojet engine portion so you can see the two fuel lines we've just installed. They both come up to the front of the engine where it'll be much cooler. I can hook a different kind of fuel line up to it. You can see our oil line coming up right here. Now the diffuser that goes down right behind this bushing here and then through the rest of our bushings through the turbojet to make sure they don't seize up on us. Here's a quick update at the end of the film. We're going to go ahead and replace this supposed 20,000 RPM motor with this 50,000 RPM motor with a 60 amp motor controller. So that'll be the one thing that'll be different between the construction video and the actual fire up video. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed. This was Mr. Teslonian.